what am I doing? Yeah. I'm just getting my materials ready to go and do some log inoculation. Good morning and welcome to Urban Farm It's Classroom where I'll be showing you how to grow shiitake mushrooms using one of our log growing kits. Selecting the correct log is one of the most important things when growing shiitake mushrooms. What you're looking for is a healthy and disease free tree that also doesn't have any other funguses growing on it. Ideally it will be a hardwood that's approximately 10 to 35 centimetres in diameter. Once you've identified your length, then you can cut out a section around about one metre long, and that is perfect for growing your mushrooms. The best time of year to cut your logs is towards the end of winter, when the tree lays dormant and has stored most energy inside the wood. However, any time of year other than spring is appropriate as well. Although ideally we'll harvest fresh logs and then leave them to stand for two weeks before use, please make sure that you get the land manager's permission and guidance before you do so. As much as we love shiitake mushrooms, they're certainly not better than healthy functioning trees. The most appropriate species for growing shiitake mushrooms are the traditional hardwoods, such as oak, hornbeam, alder or chestnut. As you're walking through the forest, it may be tempting to pick up one of these older logs scattered around, but don't. These logs here have been on the floor for at least six weeks and probably have other funguses and bacteria living within them and also probably too dry to be suitable for our growing. After you've identified your hardwood, harvest your length and then leave it for two weeks. This allows the natural fungicides to die back. If you leave it any longer than six weeks, the log may dry out and become unsuitable for use. Here we are back in the city and raring to go. But before we crack on with the inoculation, I just wanted to quickly run you through some of the pieces of kit that we're gonna be using today. What we have here is the most important thing and that is our log, which has been soaking for 24 hours and was harvested about two weeks ago. So this is really perfect and ready for use today. We've also got our log growing kit and inside there you'll find your shiitake dowels, your soy uh, sealing wax, your waxing brush, and of course your in-depth instructions. Alongside that, all you need to bring yourself is a heat source for melting the wax, a power drill, and last but not least, a mallet for bashing in your dowels. And that is it, past that, you don't need anything else and we're ready to go. All right, so we're ready to crack on. First things first, what I've done is measured up the dowel along my drill bit, just to make sure that each time we inoculate and drill, it, it goes in deep enough, because that's really, really important. What you don't want is your dowel to be sticking out of the top of your log as then when you seal it with wax it won't actually be fully sealed. Following that we're going to just take a look at our log and eye out where we want our inoculation points. Uh, there's no fixed rules to this but generally what works for me is to spread each uh, point about six inches apart along the full length of the log. Once you've done one full row you're then going to rotate the log and proceed to put another row of points staggered in line with the first so that you create a diamond shape and I'm just going to crack on and do that now. Okay so the hard graft's over and now for the fun bit we're actually going to inoculate our log with our mushroom mycelium and to do that we're simply going to grab our mallet and bang it in. So I'm taking my, uh, my wooden dowel here and I'm just going to hammer that in until it's at least flush. Beautiful. So having introduced our mycelium, it's now really, really important to protect it. And we're going to do that by adding on our sealing wax. We're going to add the sealing wax to each of the inoculation points. And this is really, really good because it stops other funguses and bacteria from entering into the log but it also helps to hold in the moisture, which is very important for a long-term growing method. If you're in the UK, like we are, you could probably get away with stopping there, 
However, if you are in a much hotter climate or your log is in an exposed or windy location, it's a really good idea to seal up the ends as well, just to protect that moisture even further. We've introduced our mushroom, we've sealed it, we've protected it, and now the final piece of the puzzle is to put it in the perfect spot. So we're gonna go over and have a look around and find that spot right now. So we've identified this quiet little corner of the garden. It's really wind free and it gets very, very little sun, which is perfect. As well as that, there's a bit of undergrowth, so that should help to maintain the ambient humidity, which is perfect for our log. As well as that, it's easy reach to our water source, so in drier days, we'll be able to top up the moisture of the log ourselves. There's so many different ways that you can stack your log. The key thing is just to keep it up off the ground where you reduce the risk of contamination from other species. So what we've done here is we've just put it on top of a couple of bricks in our chosen location. This is fine if you're just growing uh, on one or two logs in a residential setting like this, but if you were to be taking it a little bit more seriously and growing a large number of logs, then you would stack them one on top of the other. Like I say, the main thing is just to make sure that you've got good airflow, uh, good access for watering, and then it's up off the ground away from any contaminants. That's it for this episode of Urban Farm It's Classroom. Remember, the most important thing is to have fun with your growing. Join us in the next lesson.